Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. So we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. Looking at solar energy and its importance as we move through the 21st century for employment, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, technology transfer into under-resourced communities, and providing financing. All of this is an important part as far as solar energy itself is concerned. And this is something that we're going to be talking about, WDC Solar and Washington, D.C., that it's going into its second decade, but really dedicated to the inner city and a number of under-resourced communities. We have a gentleman who I met years ago, and now is working in this area as far as the larger commercial and government projects and talk a little bit about that as another type of best practice in the solar industry. So Paul Malone, we're welcoming you, Director of Engineering at WDC Solar, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the theme joining forces, but tell us about who you are and your evolution uh, going through the solar industry that we talked a little bit about yesterday and how that prepared you for what you're doing now? Well, I got started in uh, photovoltaics in 2007. And uh, at the time, there was really nothing going on here on the East Coast. Uh, so I went out to California and um, started uh, in a small mom and pop company called Ojai Solar. And, uh, they got their first big commercial project while I was there. And, um, that was at the time a pretty big project. That was a 250 kilowatt carport mm -hmm. and it launched me into the commercial world. I then went on to sunlight and power, which is the oldest installer integrator in the country. Um, a lot of solar legends, uh, moved through some light and power and I got um, I got a full training in photovoltaics while I was there and came back to DC in 2014 and joined Standard Solar uh, where I met Mark. Um, Mark and I worked together on what was uh, one of Standard's largest projects at that point which was the urban solar portfolio for DC DGS. Mm -hmm. It was an eight megawatt project on 40 different buildings and standard had some, somewhere between nine and 10 subcontractors for the, for the work because it was on some, you know, 40 buildings was a mm -hmm. big logistical challenge and each of the subs took four to five projects. And Mark was one of those subs. And um, we remained friends um, after that project and um, after I left Standard. And I ended up doing some drawings for, um, for a bunch of companies. I was sort of doing freelance design work. And WDC became one of those companies. And then I uh, was invited a year ago to attend um, a training that uh, Mark has been doing really since the company's inception 
this workforce development program has been at its core and he does trainings every year and not just in dc but this was the first time i'd actually seen one up close and i i just felt so inspired and and kind of fell in love with the mission of the company and we started working together full time uh, pretty pretty shortly after that mm -hmm. uh, so now looking at these uh, large projects uh, Paul, why is it so important that a company like WDC Solar, and there are a number of them across the city, but being involved in DCSEU, being involved DOEE, many of these uh, agencies, how does that help them to morph into larger projects and to better serve low resource communities that may be ignored or forgotten as far as many of the larger solar companies or even renewable energies at all? Yeah, well, the, um, the benefit is really twofold. Um, the residents are benefiting obviously from the savings um, of having a renewable energy system installed. Most of these projects are structured so that their community solar in aggregate, but the benefits flow down to the residents. Mm -hmm. um, we've been doing a number of DC housing authority projects. So the more money that the housing authority can capture for its residents, obviously the more beneficial it is to the community. But um, in the city, uh, there are several RFPs that are written specifically uh, for local uh, workforce participation, mm -hmm. right? You have, you've got to be a certified business uh, within DC and uh, they want minority participation. Um, they, they, there are goals and sometimes even mandates written into the scope of the work that you have to fulfill it. So it's oftentimes in DC, it's built locally, right? which, which is, you know, which is a real benefit to the community to have, um, the jobs and the workforce development program kind of written into the work. Now, looking at these larger projects, I know that uh, there's a number for the uh, the housing projects in various areas around Washington, D.C., the public schools, uh, even uh, the central government buildings are now going more and more solar. What do you think the benefit is not only to the environment, of course, but also to the citizens, the ratepayers, the taxpayers in the city, and also to uh, the various local communities. How does all this work together to benefit everyone? Well, it's worked um, really well in DC um, to benefit everyone, mostly because of the DC SREC market. So now what, what does that mean? It is uh, solar renewable energy credits mm -hmm. or uh, solar renewable energy certificates, mm -hmm. uh, if you prefer. Some people call it certificates, mm -hmm. uh, but these are the. Um, this this is basically this is a way for um, a PV system owner to sell certificates of energy that they've produced. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, produce a megawatt hour, you get a credit. Mm -hmm. And um, around the country, these markets are really stimulating uh, renewables, and they're higher than um, than uh, they are anywhere in the country here in in DC. The ESREC market has mm -hmm. been trading above four hundred dollars for per per credit per megawatt. Right. Hour. Now, looking so, at the uh, hiring and training and bringing in local people, why is that so important? And what is that doing as far as bringing a new brain trust or technology transfer into uh, lower income or uh, under-resourced communities? Well, it's just um, it's just a central mission of WDC um, that we have this workforce development piece attached to uh, the. Um, attached to the work that we we do uh, it's the first company that i've worked for in um pv that is aggressive mm -hmm. on on that and wants wants to train um, folks from its own community 
mm -hmm. and um, and some of them are disadvantaged. Some of them are returning citizens, mm -hmm. and um, we we try to open our doors uh, to everyone. I I wouldn't say that that would be common for the companies that um, we compete with or the other companies that I've worked for. I, I would say that's kind of unique to WDC, but it's highly beneficial. Mm -hmm. the, um, the, the training for this and my ability to take the last decade of my career and now try to take all, you know, convey all the lessons learned is, um, is, is so, so beneficial to the industry. I did, I, wanted as many mentors as I could have when I was starting out. Mm -hmm. so. Now, looking at this uh, large scale project, what are, are some of the best lessons? You know, we're all about uh, solutions and best practices on Emerald Planet TV. And that's what we share all over the globe. Why is a project of this size and scale so important for a company like WDC to be giving, in essence, giving back into the community? even though it's doing it as a, a what you would call a social responsible company? Well, um, you know, the larger the project, the more that we're able to um, possibly see on margin, you know, with, with construction margin is slim. Sometimes you break even, sometimes you lose money, but the theory is if you scale up, um, you're, you're playing on a, on a scale where you can potentially see more money and that means more hires. In the last year at WDC, because um, of the, the, the work that we've done and, and growing things out, we've gone from a 10 person company to a 50 person company. That's and, just incredible uh, in, the, in the inner city. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's that's big growth and mm -hmm. we we're sustaining families with that growth mm -hmm. um now how is this helping allows, mm -hmm. how is yeah. this helping the Go government uh the school systems and others to have solar energy why is that so important well it's written into the legislation that uh, we've got to cut carbon emissions in DC by 50 percent, um, 50 percent below 2006 levels in 2032. And then they want to be 100 percent free of emissions by 2050. So how do we get to that goal? Well, we got to install uh, a lot of solar. Um, it's taken off because of that legislation, uh, the, the solar market in DC. Uh, but but it, it really wouldn't wouldn't have had that kind of launch if it weren't for the legislation. Now, I'm just going to go through some of these drawings we have, but uh, looking at the sure. work that you're doing, you're the director of engineering. Uh, how are you bringing new knowledge and skills into the community? And we're going to go off on that question. You've got about 30 seconds. And why is it okay. important to be uh, continually bringing in new knowledge and skills to the community that you can produce this kind of work and uh, these uh, sophistication of projects. Yeah, well, the uh, the uh, training that I've been trying to provide to um, our students, we're, we're now a registered apprenticeship program mm -hmm. uh, in DC for, for renewables. And uh, I try to provide some training in design. And we use a lot of the 3D design tools that you just reviewed in the slide deck and uh, design is the soul of thought i think that you can take a design education mm -hmm. with you anywhere uh, right you go so for folks that leave the program hopefully they will retain you know their first exposure to some uh, pretty sophisticated design tools paul thank you very much for being with us this is the emerald planet as we come to you from washington dc showing best practices across the globe.